In this video, we're talking about going live on YouTube. Whether you have zero or a million followers, whether you have 10 or 10,000 followers, going live on YouTube is the exact same process for everyone. The only difference is the impact that live stream has on your community. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna share with you how you can spot a new streamer from a pro. Then we'll talk about the secret steps that actually get followers and viewers to come to you. And of course, we'll talk about the three-step process that keeps that momentum going. The very first thing you need to do in order to separate yourself as a pro against all of those brand new streamers is to actually plan out your content. What I'm constantly seeing my feed full of is people going live for the very first time or even if it's the hundredth time they've gone live, it still looks like it's their first time. They are figuring out their camera angles, they don't necessarily know what to say, and the worst yet is they spend a lot of their time just, is this live? Is this, can you guys see me? Is there anyone that, we gotta cut that out. So what you need to do in order to have a really impactful stream, in order to have people continuously coming back to watch your content over and over again, no matter if you have one follower or a hundred thousand followers, the one thing you need to be doing is planning out your content. And there's three main areas of each live stream that you need to plan out. Everything else will fall into this main framework. But the first thing in this framework is to plan out your opening. Plan those first 30 seconds. What are you starting your stream with? What are you going to say? Because there's two reasons we do this. One, it's actually creating engaging content. When you're done that live stream and it goes to become evergreen content, it's it now lives as a regular video people can watch, they're gonna see those first 30 seconds. And if those first 30 seconds are you staring into the void going, is this thing even on? Of course they're not gonna grab their, if that's not gonna grab their attention and they're not gonna stay to watch more. The other reason why we do this is we wanna make sure that we are speaking and creating great content regardless of how many people are watching us. So at the very beginning of your stream, no matter if you have a million or 12 million followers, there's still going to be time that the algorithm needs to send out notifications and time that people need to click and log into your stream. So the reality is those first 30 seconds, you might always be speaking to no one, but you still need to create something that's engaging and something that is going to draw your people's attention. So plan it out. A lot of people will have a regular blurb that they say on their channel all the time, and that can be really intriguing. I've seen a lot of YouTubers, and including ones that I follow myself, who use this process, and you end up repeating it with them. Every new video, the content of the video is different, but that opening is exactly the same. It's predictable, um, and your, your viewers end up actually saying it with you, which is exciting. The other thing that you can do instead of repeating repeating the same phrase all the time, or repeating the same paragraph, I should say, is to come up with a quick little one-liner at the beginning. How do you greet your community? How do you frame what's actually going to happen on this video or in this stream? So think about what you're going to do as your opening, no matter if it's going to be a big paragraph or something little. The next thing that you need to plan out is your content. What is the middle of your sandwich? Is it a chicken sandwich? Is it a cold cut sandwich? What kind of content? What is the middle? What is the meat of your video, of your stream? Are you going to be sharing a framework? Are you going to be commenting on another piece of content? Are you going to be introducing something new, getting people exciting, dropping information? Are you going to be teaching or training? What is that middle of your sandwich? What is the big, the, the golden nuggets that are going to come out of your content? If you have a general idea of what your stream is going to include, then it's going to make your stream flow a lot easier. You'll feel more relaxed in front of your camera. That will show to your people, they will be attracted to that and they'll wanna watch more of your content. 
And on the other hand, if you don't plan out that content and you end up being those people who look like they are going live for the first time a hundred times in a row, where they're like, hey, I'm just popping in to say hi. I like don't really know what I'm saying today, but I like totally just wanted to say hi because, you know, content for content's sake. Don't get into that bubble. Remember, content is about providing value, providing solutions, providing entertainment. It's not just about showing up. You can talk to yourself in the mirror if you want to see yourself talk. If you want to provide value for your community, if you want to be known, if you want people to come back to you, you have to provide them with something that they can use to move forward in their own lives or their businesses or whatever kind of realm that you and your content serves. The third thing that you have to plan out is your call to action. Your call to action can be something really big, like join my new program, check it out, blah, 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 click the links below. Or it could be something really small, like like and subscribe. Because, you know, you guys listening right now definitely should be hitting that subscribe button, joining us here on the channel, because we release new videos every single week that talk about building your influence, your authority, and ultimately your income online, and I want to see you succeed. So hit the subscribe button, join us for the journey, I want to see what you do with this info. So there are so many different ways to get people to start watching your content, but the really tricky way is getting people to return turn to your content. It's one thing to put out new shiny content, right? Be something different, sh flash your hands around, grab people's attention that way. I call those, I call that cheap attention. But wh what about if we can get people to come back, to continuously come back, to start even scheduling us into their daily lives because they know that we are a place to get solutions? Well, the way that works really, really well for us is to announce that you're going live. I know it sounds weird. We know that the algorithm is going to send out notifications to our followers, but what about those people who are just kind of casually followers or people who are not yet followers? They're, they're lurkers. They're watching your stuff, but they haven't yet uh, clicked that button to subscribe. How do we get their attention? How do we break through the noise of everyone's notifications going off when their new videos are released or their new streams are going live? Well, the easiest way is, say it with me now, to announce that you're going live. And all you have to do is send out a little tweet, send out a Facebook message, post something in your Facebook group, post something on your YouTube community tab, connect with your audience and say, hey guys, we're going live. Yes, of course, we want to make sure that we're sticking to a regular schedule, but we also want to give that extra notification. On YouTube, you also have the ability to do premieres and to load out your content and get people to start clicking on those links and subscribing to those particular videos so that when those go live, um, you can have kind of a watch party kind of thing. Everyone can be joined in the chat, things like that. You can really nurture your community, but you have to put a little bit of work into it. Don't always rely on the algorithm to serve up your content to others. As more and more content is being put onto these platforms, it's becoming a lot harder to break through that noise, to have the algorithm work in our favor. So we gotta have to do a little bit of both. So what are your thoughts on the algorithm? I know there are two totally different schools of thought on this. There are those who firmly believe in leaning into the algorithm. They spend hours and hours of their time figuring out the latest change to the algorithm, how they can game that, how they can use that to their advantage. And then there's an entirely opposite school of thought where people are like, no, just create great content, serve your audience, do your own advertising, push out your own uh, notifications for your content, and don't rely on that algorithm because it's too confusing. It's going to distract you from focusing on what matters, from creating really great content. So I want to know, let me know in the comments below, which school are you part of? Are you pro-algorithm or are you 100% in the organic world? Or maybe you're in the middle. Let me know in the comments below. Let's have this discussion, my friends. So you've created great content, you've planned it all out, you know how to get your people to start listening. So now how do we keep that momentum going? Well, it's all about creating the right workflow for your stream. Some streams are going to be really simple and you can just pop on, 
although we don't like saying that, you can just head on to your live, have your conversation. It's really low energy. It doesn't take a lot of work behind the scenes to create that content. And then we have our call to action at the end. And that's about it, right? But we can also have content that's a little bit more produced, that might have guests, that might have other people producing our content, that might be an amalgam of other multiple pieces together. But whatever your strategy is for producing your content, make sure that you've actually put some thought into what that workflow is. I found this out on a personal level a few months ago. I was creating all of this content and I realized that once I actually nailed down a workflow, there was tasks, there was entire chunks of this workflow plan that I actually didn't need to do. And I could hire assistants and I could hire editors and I could hire other people to take on those aspects of the content creation so that I could focus on doing the parts of that process that I was way better at, that didn't stress me out that I was excited to actually go do so if you're in this for the long haul if you really want to serve your audience it's about creating something that you can do on a consistent basis so here is my process step one we're gonna break this down super simple step one is to prepare what you're doing do all the behind the scenes stuff that you need to do. Organize your guests, schedule in their, uh, their interviews, have your questions organized, do your graphics behind the scenes, all of the things that you're going to need to do in order to be successful. And right before you go live, we're gonna make sure that we're announcing this to our people, we're gonna blast it out on all of our social media. And then after our stream, we're gonna host a replay. This is a really cool process that I've stumbled upon where you go live, after the live is done, you're going to take that video and post it in your Facebook group, or you're going to post it in your community tab. You're going to make a secondary announcement about it. And when we do this, we're actually going to put a time and date on it and say, hey, we're all going to watch this together if you're interested. I'm going to sit and watch the video between this time and this time. Drop on into the chat. Let's have a conversation. This is really cool because, yes, you get to watch back your content, which is something Thing I really, really recommend that everyone does, but it's also giving you full attention to what's happening in your chat, to what's happening as moments of engagement are going on in either your Facebook group or on your YouTube page or wherever you're hosting your video. Having this space to fully engage with your comments is going to be a really great way to connect with your community, to get information out of them, and great a place to get ideas for more content that your audience is driving. Oh, I love it, I love it. So my friends, that is a lot to handle for today, I know, but I wanna see you guys live. I wanna see you guys drop down into the comments. Let me know which side of the algorithm debate are you on. Let me know down in the comments below. And remember, you can still get free access to the Visibility Hacking Secrets training. Links are down below. And in the meantime, before I see you in our next video, remember, I love you, be excellent to each other, check out these videos, and I will see you next time.